football. Um, they know the dangers that, that this Burnley team pose. They weren't, they weren't around to see that, to sniff that out at all. There was the, that nous in their own box to defend and, and see things out, didn't have it. Um, and that would be disappointing for him. And he said, yeah, they, they seem like they turned a the corner at home, but it's, uh, it's, it seems like it's a, a never-ending story of just one step forward, two steps back. Yeah, OK, really difficult position for him to be in as well. But listen, when you're the manager of Manchester United, it kind of comes with the territory. If results aren't good enough, still. Is it fear? Is it a lack of confidence? What is it? You know, the boys are giving everything they've got. They are experiencing this period for the first time in their life, some of them. And it's very, very difficult for them. It's, you know, the expectations at this club as well is high. And some of them, they played 10, 12, 15 games. And uh, it's... It's not easy for them, so of course I'm, I'm going to back them. Uh, I'm going to be here to, to help them get through this because um, that's you know when you're at Man United, you're, there's always going to be criticism, and we hold our hands up now. There's, <laughs> we, we can't do anything but hold our hands up and say this isn't isn't good enough for this club. I understand you've got injuries. You're in a, a state of transition in some respects with young players, but it's still the worst league start for 30 years. Yeah, and uh, but that's. Uh, you know, you can you can talk about that all day long, and of course we're disappointed in the points tally, our performances. We're still fifth in the table, which I don't want to hang on to that we're fifth in the table. Um, but of course, yeah, we we work every single day with these boys to uh, to improve and to get to get us uh, performing better than this. And people can see what's missing and people can see what you need. Are you getting the support that you require to, to, to change that? Yeah, we're looking for, uh, to, uh, to improve, yeah, definitely. And we, we know as well, we've got our targets. And of course, we, days like this highlights more how well some of them feet now at home. It's the first since August. And we've, I, th I thought we'd turn that corner winning games like this, and, but we haven't, clearly, and uh, keep chipping away. But I also talk about support in terms of recruitment, because yeah, it's clearly I understood, needed. I understood you were talking about that, and uh, uh, that's always going to be uh, the talk uh, at the moment, because uh, we've, uh, we've started a, a clear out and uh, get players in uh, job. And now it's a transfer window, so of course uh, I'm going to be answering these questions until um, <laughs> until it's closed. Yeah. So, um, and we're working on things. Because United are one of the biggest clubs in the world, and people are waiting to see United deliver it as one of the biggest clubs in the world in the transfer market. Yeah, but for me, the most important thing, or we have to perform on the pitch, and today wasn't good enough for a Man United team. Thanks, Ali. Cheers. Understandably, pretty strong words then for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Uh, you know, it, it won't help, I suppose, that what he said before the game, after the Liverpool defeat, United are going in the right direction. That was the last thing he needed after those words, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And uh, I think too often this season, we've, you know, they've had two or three good results and two or three bad results. And he's always asking for a reaction. It, you're not always going to get it. Um, yeah, they played OK at Liverpool, but... A lot of performance tonight, it might do him a favour in the transfer market, it might, you know, just spur the club on to, to, sp to spend that extra few million on, on whatever Fernandes or Sporting Lisbon, or more importantly his, his agent want, that extra five or six million might, might get done now tomorrow because of this. But he, he, he needs bodies in the building, doesn't he? I think if he's, he's got some big injuries to his team, we know that Lindelof out again tonight, who, I don't think he's, he's, he's a big mess, I think more Pogba and... McTominay will be a, a bigger miss for him. Um, so he, he needs help, there's, there's no doubt about that. Can he get bodies in the building? That's up to the club to help him now. But he's running out of time, isn't it? We're 21 days into this current transfer window uh, and it, on the basis of that performance, it, it needs more than just one or two new faces to turn things around, Tim. Yeah, uh, they've got to make their mind up, Manchester United, we're all going to socialise, going to be in a man for the long term before they start spending any money in this January window. Why, why would you spend money? Why would you give this man money if you feel that he's not going to be your long term manager? Listen, if they want to go with him, then give him as much as you can. Give him some help on the recruitment side. Help him out. It's a big football club. He can't do it all. Then he needs to concentrate on improving what he has. 
Oli can't look what's outside of his club at the moment. He's got to look what's in it. And that he had a squad of players available to him tonight to beat Burnley Football Club. Let's not beat around the bush. He didn't produce tonight. His players didn't produce, but he didn't pick the right side to win that football match tonight. So he has to take some sort of blame. The buck always stops with the managers. I feel for him. That is the worst part of the job. Mm. When you've lost a game, you go in front of the cameras and you have to answer the questions. It's part of the job. And you're at the biggest club in the world. He knows that. He knows the pressures are going to be on him. I don't agree with him. They're not on the right track. They're on the absolute wrong track. And they need to get on the right track as soon as possible. But he needs help. He needs bodies. But not bodies to beat Burnley. Not bodies to beat Sheffield United. With respect, they're going well. Yeah. Not bodies to beat other teams who he's lost to this year. Wolves. And stuff. Yes, it's Man City. You're nowhere near Man City. Yes, Liverpool. You're nowhere near them. But they're fifth in the league. Mm. They got... They, he's expected to take him to the top four. Just like Jose Mourinho is expected to take Tottenham to the top four and Mikel Arteta is expected to take Arsenal to the top four and Frank Lampard is expected to take yeah. Chelsea. That one spot is up for grabs because I think Leicester will get third. He's got, every, he's got as good a chance as any and I believe his squad of players is probably better than the rest. Maybe Tottenham, I would argue. You see, and even United's former side, Paul... Chelsea have taken 14 points from the last 12 league games and United are still six points off a top four spot. Well, yeah, Chelsea uh, are not in a great run. It just shows how bad Manchester yeah. has been, really. Um, you know, we keep going about the players, players that have been missing tonight. And as Tim said, that squad of players that are out, that team tonight should, should, should be enough to beat Burnley. It, it really should. Mm. And I fear for the next four or five weeks, because I don't think any of them players are coming back quickly. I don't think McTominay's coming back. I don't think Pogba's on his way back. Mm. And even if he is on the way back, he'll be moaning about something else to try, try and not play, trying to get his move away from the club. Marcus Rashford, we know, looks like, looks like three months he's out for. So he's stuck with these players for now for the next six weeks, and he's got to somehow coach these players and work these players to get a bit of confidence back into them and try and get some results, but they've got some right games in the next few weeks. So this, mm. could, this is a really tough time for him. But what did you make of the scenes at Old Trafford towards the end of the contest when fans were, were clearly had enough? They were making their way out of the stadium. Well, and this yeah. is when things get, I suppose, a little bit dangerous in that apathy now kind of rules Old Trafford. Yeah, well, that happens at every game you go to. 2-0 down with five minutes ago. People still expect Manchester United to win games, but I think this you look at it 10, 15 minutes ago and these, these are the scenes you were seeing. But even right at the start, to the start of the game, I said to Tim, look at the empty seats you could see at the start of the game, little clusters of seats everywhere. Mm. OK, it's a Wednesday night, it's expensive, I, I, I get that, but you could never get a ticket for Manchester United going back years. and yeah. the last, last two years even, you could never get a ticket. And now, you know, that, that speaks volumes for where the club are at. I mean, it's not good scenes, you know, empty seats. They're voting on their feet. But what they're showing him, a lot of respect. They don't want to stay there and they don't want to boo him. Mm. They're showing him that. Mm. But what they're doing instead is leaving. And the next thing will happen, if it continues, they won't come. That is a real serious problem. Yeah. Because trying to look at what United were trying to do in the last 15 minutes... Was there, was there a coherent game plan as far as you're concerned? Was there a style of play that they were trying to use? Well, style of play is trying to score goals. They were desperate to score goals and the, the play just weren't good enough. Um, and you have to say it's the players who just don't have the quality to, to break a team like Burnley down. Look, it's difficult to play against that. Would, me and Tim, we'd have played against that a million times, but you just have to be patient and think the opening will come. But so many times they were, they were trying to force a pass matter. I never seen him give the ball away so much. Mm. Yeah. Fred again, he, he's supposed to be a creative midfielder. No influence on the game whatsoever. He never felt he was going to create a chance. He never felt he was going to score a chance. And Martial, little flashes, I suppose. A couple of shots outside the box in the second half. He had his chance in the first half where, where he definitely should have scored at least one of them. But no, the, the, tonight was, it was worrying because, like I said before, the injuries they've got, they're not expecting anyone back imminently. And this is a team they're going to have for the next six weeks and that's a team I think is easy to play against. OK. You could call it good forward play as well. He gets across the front man and it is an awkward finish, as Tim said. I think it does, he does get a little bit lucky. It does roll, roll down his shin a little bit, but... No credit to him for getting in that position. What did you make on United's defending for that first goal? Poor. Paul's absolutely right. Let me tell you, Matic, six foot five. Mm. Yeah? 
probably even a little bit taller. When you stand next to him, he towers over you. Ben Mee, six foot one at the most. Now, I know it's not all about size, it's about technique as well. But you know what that was about? That was about wanting to head it. That was about willingness to go and stick your head on the ball mm -hmm. and you might get a knock. He doesn't care. And the anticipation there of Wood, excellent. They know he's going to win that ball, even though he's got a giant next to him. He, Matic didn't want to win that ball. He didn't want to win that ball, he just jumped. There's no one there who's putting their head on things. We, we highlighted before the game, they are the worst team from corners. Set pieces, they are disgustingly poor, mm. Manchester United. The organisation on their defending is nowhere near good enough. Their play, uh, in open play, isn't good enough either. They are not clinical in the opposition box and they're very, very poor defending their own box. Recipe for not very good uh, results and that's what he's suggesting. As for the second goal, it was a spectacular strike from Jay Rodriguez. He could not have hit this any truer. Mm. But like Paul, did you feel maybe that De Gea could have done better? At the time, at the time, I think he's, it's a strike of his life. If you watch Jones here, he tries to win that one. Can't get there and it's a good touch from Rodriguez. He takes it out and it's uh, on his weaker foot, I think his left foot there. And he absolutely smashes it. Mm. But I thought he should have done better. I think he, he gets him on his near post. I think if he stands up, he makes it look very, very difficult to save. I mean, he's hit it very, very well. If I have to give him the benefit of the doubt, I'll give it to the striker. And maybe De Gea, it's out of his reach. I don't think he expects a strike of that quality. Yeah. I think he's, he's, he is caught by surprise, but he shouldn't be. Mm. He should be a crosser. He should be a cross. He should be covering that near post at all times. And look, I know, as Tim said, it was an unbelievable strike. Of course it was. But the keeper, for me, should do better. As the last two games for De Gea maybe summed up his season so far? Yeah, it's been patchy. I'd say probably his 18 months have been patchy. Yeah. He's been one of the best goalkeepers in the world. I would have said before that for the three or four years before that, but the last 18 months he's been a little bit shaken. He needs to, he needs to up his game. Mm. Um, 